Cabu. 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 Chairperson. I want to start. Uh, if you can uh, tell us how many we are. I will do that, Chairperson. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, we have uh, Chairperson Ms. Lulane, we have Ms. Adams, we have Mr. Mshongo, we have Ms. Malumane, we have Mr. Faba, we have Mr. Mazingozi, we have Mr. Siabi, and we also have Ms. Van Dijk. We have an apology from Ms. Dr. Kabani. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, 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 Mazo. Can you uh, now give me a chance and mute all other mics that I must open the meeting? Yes, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, honorable members uh, uh, and our guests. Today we are hosting you, the Cricket South Africa. But before that, this is a, a month which is very important to our history. The June uh, month. June is a huge month. Mute everyone. Go and and uh, and uh, and and Jabu. We can't have this. No one must talk as from now onwards. We must operate like that. If they don't feel themselves, we must do that. What is going on? Jabu and Zo. You must mute everyone. I'm, I'm opening the meeting, but I'm still hearing people talking. Okay, Chair. Okay. I'm saying June is the youth month. Uh, we must keep the spirit uh, going. Those young leaders do not uh, die in faith, but th their spirit uh, will always have with us. Uh, I'm suspecting that there's no one who's born in South Africa that doesn't know what happened in 1976. Uh, it was then, we were still uh, just young, not young at heart, and we were part of those struggles. It has been 44 years since then, which they were brutally murdered by the past regime. We salute their spirit and recommit to serve our people with dedication <laughs> and has a spirit. Today we are... No, 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 we can't go on like this. Who is talking? There's a noise behind you talking, coming out. I can no, 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 please switch off your mic. I'm talking about the noise that is coming to me. No, coming no, from no. <laughs> Jabu and Maso, why are we having this? Chair, the mics, the mics are muted. It's only your mic that's on, Chair. But I'm hearing people talking. Mm. Listen, there's one thing mm, even now. Cricket, we, we do welcome you, uh, Cricket South Africa. We have not interacting with you, uh, this um, sixth parliament. And then uh, I'm yeah. suspecting that everyone who's belonging to South Africa, you see the scourge of violence. Uh, we once attend the workshop of all stakeholders of sport, arts and culture, where we were just discussing this problem of gender-based violence, but it is just worse uh, than ever. Uh, you can't believe that uh, your husband, your boyfriend, 
your uncle, your father in some other instances, they can uh, kill, they can do every horrible things in, in our women, even in kids. I can't understand. And we need to be united. We need you colleagues that uh, you must form your organization, that you must educate the, these little boys. But it's not only little boys. It's only grown-up men that are doing this. You know what? It's so pathetic that every week a, a young woman is being raped is being killed, is being hanged. A young three-year-old is being raped, is being uh, butchered, killed. What have we done? What have you done as women uh, of South Africa? Uh, brothers, fathers, uh, can you try that the little boy you must tell who are their mothers sisters, aunt, cousin, we cannot go on like this. Why, before I'm becoming emotional about this thing of gender-based violence, here we are, uh, um, I wanted to say, Cricket South Africa, we are welcoming you, but before we open this meeting uh, uh, 20 minutes ago, I've noticed that three of you, whilst you are going to introduce yourself, we have presenting us with you, male, 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 that this question of gender, it is nowhere in some of uh, uh, institutions, in some of a uh, place where women supposed to be part uh, in, in each and every department, in communities. We are mothers of this world. Um, we can't whenever we are having a slot that any community to be present something, you left the mothers behind. Gone are those days that we must be in the kitchen. And, and you know, this thing is, is, is horrible. That's why we are having this gender-based violence, because we're starting not to recognize the women folk. We can't go on like this. Uh, by those words, I'm welcoming, saying that uh, we're having an, uh, an agenda in front of us. If I can give it to Uzolega, or Ujabu to give us apologies. Thank you, Chairperson. The only apology we have is Dr. Nkabane, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, uh, Chairperson, yes. can I kindly of request that members that are not presenting they switch off their uh, videos so that we can have a uh, better audio? Thank you, Chair. Starting with myself, ne? Yes, sir. When you're done, Jefferson. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm putting the agenda in front of you, honorable members. Uh, can you adopt the agenda? Yes, person. Yes. Yes, yes. honorable Tsebom Songo, move for adoption. Any second? I yes, Chairperson, Honorable Faber. Honorable Faber, Honorable Malomane. Is it Malomane was, I'm hearing a, a lady voice. Was yes, that? it's Malomane, Chair. Okay, you are third at it. Uh, honorable mm -hmm. members, may I have the agenda uh, has been adopted. Uh, may I have the second item, apologies? We have already done the apologies, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, now, 
uh, can we, President of Cricket South Africa, uh, give us your delegation officially before we're giving you the slot? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Good afternoon to the members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, Chairperson, um, my name is Chris Nenzani. I lead this delegation, which is made up of the Vice President Beresford Williams. Even though he seems to have uh, connectivity issues, but uh, the office is assisting him as much as they can. Uh, the, then the other member of the delegation is the acting CEO, uh, Dr. Jacques Fall. We thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. And uh, we apologize, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members of the Committee. Uh, it, it was not an intention of all on our part to disrespect you, Honorable Chair, and your committee. Uh, we tried uh, by all means to have a minimum delegation. We have a process that is ongoing at CSA currently, an induction process of the board members. We had just completed uh, an election process of new independent directors. And uh, all of them, three of them are women. I mean, two of them are women, one is a male. And uh, we have uh, in, within our structures the chairperson or the president of Central Houghton Lions, uh, who is a female. We're making small strides, as I said in one of our appearance before your honorable committee, that uh, uh, the nature of cricket, uh, we're trying to change uh, so that we introduce more uh, leaders, uh, women leaders into the upper echelons of the administration of cricket. Uh, with doing that, Chair, we're quite cognizant that uh, that is a key demographic constituency within our country. <clears throat> and also, Chair, you have touched on a very important matter as well. Uh, the issue of gender-based violence. I just want to share this with the committee chair, that uh, in, at our AGM last year, we allocated a lot of time during my address to the AGM, where we adopted a position as CSA to say, because within our own players, the majority of them are young men, young boys, and then you have men at a, at a higher level, at a professional level. And, and uh, we, we committed ourselves to say, these players that are within our ranks, they must be sensitized, they must be taught, they must also be made aware that uh, the country is facing a very, very serious indictment in the manner in which it treats women and children. And as such, our programs, our offerings, talk to that. And as such, we had said that uh, we do not want to unleash into communities. From cricket structures, people are going to be a danger to society. And as such, also, we accepted and said to ourselves that it is a responsibility of men in whatever quarter of the country to ensure that the safety of women, young children, uh, is always regarded as sacrosanct and that we do everything we can as an organization to ensure that we sensitize our own people, our own players. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, President, about that. President, let me say official now that uh, we cannot uh, every now and then accept an apology where your representation is not according to gender. Uh, correctly so, even last time we complained, even when we are coming to present, you, you must know that we are coming in the committee which is taking very serious the question of gender, especially in sport. We've been looking at this 
and we have been in all those who are coming to present emphasize uh, uh, 26 down the line we are still talking the very same issue how are we going uh, to accept that women must be part of each and every delegation is coming in the committee even last time we were saying this so uh, when somebody is asking apology, according to our culture, we need to accept apology. But for how many times? I, I, I wanted to note that, and, and I'm suspecting as you finish um, a, a, your presentation and giving your updates of, of whatever we are doing, as you started to tell that we are doing ABC, we need to hear everything that uh, is going on in Cricket South Africa. Uh, by nature, Cricket South Africa was the first one to adhere uh, to the transformation which was put uh, by the department to the policy. Uh, but today, I cannot say that you have reversed you were the first uh, ones to do that. Uh, but today, when we are, we, are, we are getting to questions, we'll interact and we'll want to ask and scrutinize what is going on. Where are the women of South Africa? Uh, but let's thank uh, what you, you have just said, and especially that you are talking about also the gender violence, but you must not forget about the youth of South Africa and, and the boy child. Thank you so much. Uh, now, let me uh, take this opportunity uh, to ask uh, the president that we must now conduct the presentation. We just tell who's going to talk, who's going to follow, uh, in order that now I'm, I'm going uh, to be like, like any other person to take off my video. Uh, I'm giving you the latitude of presenti present presenting and whilst you are presenting, you just tell who's next uh, until you finish your presentation. I thank you. Order Chair. Thank yes, you, Honorable Chair. On the point of order, Chair. Yes, Honorable Mshongo. Chair, just for housekeeping, I wanted to find out how, much, how, how many hours or minutes are we giving to get South Africa for presentation? Because we only allocated to the hours, two hours for questions. Uh, Jabu? Uh, yes, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, it's uh, 20 past 12 now. And maybe they can present up until 1 o'clock. And then the two hours will be left for the question yes. and answer sessions because it's quite a lengthy presentation, Chair. Honorable members, can you agree on Thank that? Thank you very much, um, Chair. Honorable President of the South African Cricket, uh, are you going to manage to present now until one? Are you going to finish your slides? We will do so, Honorable Chair. Okay. Thank you, honorable members. Now is the time that we must give it to the president. I thank you, honorable members. President. Thank, thank you, honorable chair. We will stick to the time that is allocated to us. In order to have a flow in our presentation, you have received it. It's quite lengthy, but uh, we will talk through it. We're not going to go uh, line by line. Uh, I will hand over to the CEO to deal with aspects certain aspects of the of the presentation then once he's covered those aspects he will hand over to me to deal with issues that relate to the forensic investigation the disciplinary processes and where we are at this stage jack over to you thank you mr president must not thank forget, you. Uh, just a moment uh, honorable fab uh, has been reminded Finding you that you are having an acting CEO. I don't want that they must disturb you whilst you are talking. 
when we were not uh, doing official meeting, Honorable Fabs complained about saying we have a CEO is acting. Honorable Fabs, don't ask that question. I've covered you. Thank you. Chairperson, I was not complaining. I was just saying I was just that saying, I like uh, to see I like I covered you. I covered you, my, my leader. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. If, if I might continue, I just want to check, Chairperson, um, if the presentation is visible to everyone, Chairperson. I've put it on the screen. Not yet, uh, Dr. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. And um, good afternoon, Chairperson and committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you. Um, I will do so within the allocated time. And we'll also ask our president, um, Mr. Chris Nzane, and our vice president, Mr. Beresford Williams, to continue uh, the discussion uh, after the presentation. There is certain of the aspects um, that they dealt with directly, um, and I will allow them to also fill in. Uh, we did distribute um, a chairperson um, information for reading, so we do help, um, hope that that will give context to the presentation. Uh, Chairperson, we we have had a, um, a difficult time since December 2019 um, with suspensions of uh, senior members, uh, also including the, the then CEO, uh, and the CSA board came up with a recovery plan, and we divided it into a short six-month short-term tactic and then a further um, short-term tactics from June, August on. Um, we then will have a strategic plan in place after the um, annual general meeting that will take place in September, uh, whereby a new board will be elected and hopefully by then we will also have um, sorted out the permanent CEO position or the CEO position. So that is just a strategic um, overview of, of where, where we are. The presentation, are. Is not, the presentation is not on the screen. This, uh, ma'am, let me just see if I can get it on. Uh, annual general meeting that will take place in September, on, uh, whereby a new board will be elected and hopefully by then we will also have um, sorted out the permanent yes, yes, CEO yes. position or the CEO position. Now, thank you very so much. That is just a strategic overview of where we are. on slide two, Cricket South Africa then had the recovery plan. We started off with a business audit, a customer survey and introduced the stakeholder management plan that addressed all our key stakeholders after mapping them, um, um, uh, Madam, uh, and then had to start the process of meeting mending some of the um, burn relationships that we had. The players Association would be one, and also one of the um, broadcasters. Um, and it comes to all that most of these have been restored, um, but we, we then had to look into a matter of crisis management and how do we build credibility going forward. Further, we needed to build some commercial capacity. Um, and as we've continued with this process, the world was um, confronted with the COVID-19 uh, um, pandemic, and we divided a, a lot of time in crafting a strategy. Our strategy is based on four pillars. The first one is safety, that we make sure that all involved in sport and that we can um, safely say that safety and their well-being is the number one priority. With the COVID-19 second pillar uh, was uh, to look at pandemic, how we can we use our voice as sport to motivate South Africans and also the world our to do the right thing. Four pillars. How the we can use our voice to that we make sure um, that it generates invaluable sport income and, and that we can most um, vulnerable safety in the South African say, society. That that the second pillar and their well-being the is the number one priority. With was, the second pillar, make sure that we engage with stakeholders and we can use our voice as key stakeholders to motivate them at the testing time. And the fourth one uh, was to see how we can mitigate the, the financial, financial impact of our voice that we make sure have on that generate. We've been very fortunate um, that we can make that we went into our office season and we make the second pillar and their money in the third tours and play by the second pillar to make sure that we engage with stakeholders. We've been fortunate to have key stakeholders. We are 
Pokud jsem byl v ekosystému, pokud jsem byl v relationship, 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 which is a knockout competition and the idea is to take cricket to remote areas in South Africa so rural areas Um, 
Manager and the committee members. I think a lot is being written about it. And, and we, we, we track and we measure and the ideas we should do in two remote areas. And then it comes to transformation of the area. So I need to take charge and value it one high. We also got to need to know that Makisha had an interim support coach and staff at my three guns in India. And the park was also very well transformed. And it's then, I mean, look at how we compare between the two. There's not, there's not much difference to the new ones that uh, um, that was appointed under the um, the yeah, now yeah, director yeah, of logistics, yeah, 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 Smith. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, um, we can never do enough for transformation, and, and, and I think we must also strive to include it. In some cases, we get the body of coach probably replaced by the 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 same race person. It also we had an opportunity to transform. We now have a future that we can support. Second slide, I think, included the previous CEO and the head of Pathways to give maybe a incomplete. Picture of it, you will see that the numbers below compared are more or less the same. It's not much difference. It is something that we can look at. I think that our biggest dream is that all our towns, all our management teams, respect the demographics of South Africa. We were very fortunate to be able to do it. In some cases, the same is something that we measure, but again, we can never do it. And the same race person, it will show us and we take guidance from you to our last talk. the <laughs> Function for this year. Um, I am actually very proud to announce that this, this year we might take a break. And we have to note that there might be adjustments, but it's safe to say that we'll be either between 50 or 80 million rands. The budget that is this year for a loss of 76 million, and which is a very good news story for us. Our, our financial years run over four years, and the last time financial status on occasion we didn't mention things in the last Number of 654 million. Now that cycle ends in the year 22. Over the positive swing, the we brought it down far this year, but with the positive swing around 4 million, 400 million now. So this year, that day will continue. The positive accounting period is that they must be related to the weak rand. We get paid in dollars, US dollars, while our broadcasting budget is spikes up a large percentage of our income. It can be anything you store between. 50 and 60 percent, depending on financial years, how many people come in here, our revenue, financial status, financial status, and the number of billions we had this year is 1.1. So that's why I call due to the fact that you have England and Australia connected to a year with a positive screen. The transformation number is just a positive admin fee to the one in the bond that runs it out and that is spent on the new effort. The positive 8 million rand, most quick and services of which is rand, we have to get it. Positive situation for us. The president could get around to speak to the new forensic audit, but I have included slides on slides to that. I would allow him, the chairperson, to speak through it. A lot of it indicates the work that has been done by the forensic investigation. Maybe the slide is a better reflection of it and how far they've completed. This was at the time. 
just a summary of my points previously and how we can go through it and explain the facts and why the same as revenue. Revenue for us, um, how you protect our matches, might make the bulk of our money from the government. We sell that to a broadcast and also sell sponsorship packages. Sponsorship packages that you just remind you of um, you are in the matches. But in summary, whatever concern is that you to a program which refers to our natural resources, I just other countries playing us in South Africa just playing them in their countries of sponsorship the dollar rand ratio. We've seen the impact they of and, and the value uh, through it being an exporter sadly for a revenue rand does help us in some ways by making fun of our money in South Africa. Um, plans for new sponsorship packages. Sponsorship packages is part of my first to um, our strategy that we have done. Our biggest concern is to get to a program is part of the one that we have to respond to the protests. Sponsorship um, has been put on on force uh, right over the world. It's not a lot of people that, that actually um, do sponsorship things at this time. It's a very low level of predictability and does not see it in terms of our test. Cricket sponsorship is pretty popular. Sponsorship is not available at this stage. The same will be for uh, the ODI. This is part 50 over cricket. So the previous slide, the uh, chairperson will refer to test cricket, five day cricket, and we look at the next slide. Uh, is our second property is 50 format. Um, again, you'll see three category partners still available, and we don't have a team sponsor at, at this stage. Um, and then, of course, the T20, which is a very strong property for us. You'll see there's four category partners um, available, also the back of the shirt. Um, and then, of course, we still need a, a, a sponsor to go with that. Chairperson, we've uh, just launched the Solidarity um, Cup match that we hope to play on the 27th um, um, under strict rules. And um, I must compliment the de department uh, that's worked quite closely with us, both the minister and the officials has been fantastic in helping us getting this over the line. Um, Chairperson, I also need to um, mention that uh, one of the coaches of the three teams is, is a lady, Mignon de Priya, quite a seasoned cricketer, so it'll be the first time that a, a women's coach will coach a men's team, and we want to use this opportunity um, to highlight gender um, violence and using our voice as sports people um, to highlight the issue in South Africa and um, also adhering to the call of our president the other night. Are we going to use this and we're going to roll out a lot of things around it and also indicate that um, this wonderful women's player can also be a coach of um, men and, and hopefully we will add our voice to it. It will add to the um, hardship fund um, which I think will, will um, be of value for us uh, um, the hardship fund will look at a lot of great initiatives done by our, our cricket players. Temba Bavuma has won FAF, duplicies the amenities. So that is something that we feel um, strong about. Also, the industry is a cutthroat industry. A lot of people lose their contracts. Um, it's been really tough if you were a professional coach, and hopefully the hardship fund will work to that. I also um, got to mention that Solidarity Fund Board so we hope that this is unique. It's, it is a unique um, format, it's never been played before. It's three teams at the same time. South Africa launched this. Um, there was a big global uptake to it and it is wonderful. Um, it it um, works on the basis that a commercial sponsor will pick up all the costs and the teams are then sold uh, and they will the money will be donated um, for the hardship fund. So it already have an income um, going. Um, Again, um, Chairperson and Committee, we, we know that, that sport has the power to change the world um, and the power to inspire, in, inspire. We are temporary custodians of the game. Um, we must serve the game as best as we can. We, we do have a lot of challenges and, and I think in the last six months um, we've gone through this. I was also the acting uh, Chairperson um, uh, Chairperson, I was also the acting CEO back in 2012-2013 uh, where we faced similar challenges and we got through it and after that actually had a wonderful um, time in cricket. I think it's fair to say that we, we in a way got to apologise for the for the situation we got ourselves in. 
I can ensure you that the fact that financially we already a bit more stable um, will help us. The fact that we have signed a, a international sponsor for a substantial amount will, will also help us. But there's lots, a lot to do, um, uh, Chairperson. There's a lot to do on uh, in terms of, of gender equity. Um, and, and I hope one day um, we will reach our goal of reflecting our wonderful nation. I oh, thank you, Chairperson, and I hand over to our President. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honourable Chairperson, I'll deal with the matters that relate to the uh, forensic services that are conducting an investigation at CSA. We took that decision in, in December 2019 when we addressed the press conference on the 7th of December 2019. And uh, we said that uh, we will put in place a management investigation uh, and we are, are going to appoint an independent company. We appointed Fundu the forensic services. There were quite, there was quite some delay because the forensic service was not only going to look at Yes, I open the presentation. We want to see what the president is presenting to us. Is it a verbal report or not? I don't see that. I only see the code from Nelson Mandela. Now, can we have a presentation or is it a verbal report that he's giving us? Chairperson, if I might, it's, it's, uh, it's adding to the report um, the slides referring to the um, forensic audit and the disciplinary matters. So it's not an additional report and, and, and you would not, there's no slides on that, Chairperson, if it helps. Maybe Jacques Chair. can go back to the slides that Chair. talk about the investigation. Chair, point of order. Yes, Honorable Michel. Chair, it's one of the requests. If there's no slide, there's no presentation. It shows that CSA, they're undermining this committee. Why I'm saying that one of the requirements, it's they must present a forensic report of all disciplinaries. Now it shows that they're undermining us. They must give us a presentation now. Uh, yeah, can you go uh, back uh, to uh, the uh, uh, Yes, I, I was um, going to say that uh, was saying that uh, you'll add on. I'm suspecting maybe he was saying that you clarify more on the presentation that uh, he presented. My yes. understanding is that. Yes, I'm requesting him to go back to the slide that talks about the investigations as well as the the disciplinary processes because it's. Yes, um, it is in the presentation. Can you see the presentation? Let me just see. Just go back, Jacques. Okay. Is the presentation visible, President? No, no, we don't see it yet. Okay. Is it visible now? President, is it visible now? Yes, there it is. Okay. Here we go, President. So um, these disciplinary matters. Um, you want to start with? Just go um, you're welcome to start off with forensic. Yeah. Just go there we go. Just go there, that's the start, yeah. uh, um, President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Honourable Chair. This is the slide that I was talking to because if you remember when the CO, acting CEO was presenting, he referred, he said that I will be dealing with these slides. So we appointed Fundus Forensic Services in February and they started to do their work on the 6th of March. And, and the reason for that, uh, the board did not only say the forensic investigation should focus on management, but we also said that forensic investigation must also focus on how the board, whether the board had adhered to hits to, to the CSA's governance uh, framework as well. 
Once we made that statement or that decision, then service uh, company, then we that function had to go to the members council, that is the 14 provincial presidents that will sit as the members council. They had to agree on the terms of reference, agree on the processes and do the appointing, which they did. Uh, they, they, there was a lot of uh, toing and terms of reference, but eventually the company was appointed. And the company had to do a lot of work. We, we gave them a period that they can go 24 months back and look at all the processes, management decisions, board decisions. Uh, they did, that was a lot of work. And uh, they had indicated that uh, they will give part one of that report to CSA by close of business today. Uh, and then the second part will be available to CSA before the 30th of June of this year. And, and uh, it looked at a number of uh, issues. It looked and uh, uh, looking at uh, issues like delegation of authority, conflict of interest, management thereof, procurement of uh, policies, and many other issues. Uh, also, one of the matters that it had to look at uh, had to look at uh, what what could be the possible issues that uh, CSA could put forward as the matters that could lead to a process of disciplining the suspended CEO. We have information, but we wanted them to confirm and quantify that kind of information so, so that CSA can take a, 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 a process forward in terms of dealing with the suspended CEO. Also, before the CEO was suspended, he had uh, suspended three senior executives and uh, some middle and junior managers for various uh, indiscretions and the uh, disciplinary processes had unfolded. People were found guilty and, and uh, dismissed. Those who were sanctioned with dismissal. Uh, those that were sanctioned with uh, written warnings, that was done. Uh, uh, currently, we are waiting the outcome of a, an appeal which was made by the suspended chief of operating officer. And uh, that appeal is due. I mean, the outcome is uh, also you would have seen that uh, the head of sales and sponsorship relations manager uh, had, had uh, appealed to the board what, because he was found guilty and uh, the sanction that was issued by the independent disciplinary chairperson was that of dismissal. He has indicated that he's going to take that uh, appeal or appeal further to the CSCMA. We are therefore waiting to hear and then we'll have to make representations uh, in defense of the decision that the board took. Uh, all of these matters, we are trying to go into a period where we can say they have been uh, concluded, but uh, these processes are not controlled by us because they're done independently and therefore we have to deal uh, with them uh, in the manner in which the independent people are dealing with them give us reports. Uh, but we, 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 we are confident that uh, we will be solving the bulk of these issues before the end of June so that the organization can move and move without the, the, the focus on the disciplinary issues. It, it became necessary that these DC issues needed to be taken on board because you had people that had to take accountability for the actions or omissions on their part. So that, that in a nutshell is a, is a report and, and an explanation on the issues that relate to uh, Funduzi Forensic Services investigation, which is nearing its end. I'm expecting by today that they will submit part one of their report, which is going to assist us to take action that we need to take in the next few days. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, thank you, President. Thank you, uh, Action CEO. Honorable members, I'm suspecting uh, they've managed uh, 
to finish on the agreed time. I've been told that the DG, the DG is with us. We are welcoming you, uh, Minister and the DG. So now, honorable members, may I take this opportunity um, who's this? Jabu and so assist me on the discussions that I'm, I'm, I'm calling now the honorable members to take their time uh, and ask questions, notification, way forward, uh, Jabu. Thank uh, you, Chairperson. We have Mr. Madlingozi. Yes. Mr. Mazingozi, Mr. Mshoko. Sorry, Smazo. Yes, Chairman. The, the first member to raise the hand was Tatu Siabi, then Tatu Faba, okay. and then Tatu Mazingozi. I, I can't hear. I, I can't hear you. Okay, Chair. It was Tatu Siabi. Yes. Siabi, Chair. Yes. And then Faba. Yes. And then Mazingozi. Yes. And then Tatum Shongo. Yes. I see Chairperson that Umamu U Maloman has raised the hand as well. Okay. In that order, Chairperson. And Miss Adams. Miss Adams' hand is also up. Thank you. Thank you, honorable members. Let me take this opportunity to to give Honorable Siabi, and after Honorable Siabi, you must uh, note is Honorable Fapa. After Honorable Fapa, Madingosi, uh, number four, Honorable Mshongo, number five, Honorable Malomane, number six, Honorable Adams, because I, I, I want even to listen to you. I'll come after Honorable Adams as number seven. Thank you so much. I'm out now. Thanks very much, Chair. I hope I'm audible. Jabu, am I audible? Yes, yes sir, you are. are. Yes, you are. Dr. Faber, can you switch up your video, please? Thanks very much, Chair. And I want to start by welcoming the, the presentation from uh, Cricket South Africa. I'm just uh, concerned that uh, President, you don't invite us to your matches. Having said that, I saw a statement, President, that is attributed to you saying, you regret why you stayed for another year as the chair of, I mean, as the president of Cricket South Africa. I'm not sure whether it's, it's true, if it's true, please take us into confidence because this statement says to me that uh, the house is on fire. Uh, the chairperson in her opening remarks talked at length on issues of transformation. And you were, as you said, also in your presentation, you were once regarded as the champion of transformation in that area, but there are signs that uh, you are regressing on that one. Although the acting CEO said you are on top of it, I don't know if you can give us a plan on how are you going to make sure that you continue with the issues of transformation, because that is key for, for the country. The other question is, uh, how were you as an organization affected by COVID-19? Um, there is a, in your, we have your annual budget as presented. In your annual budget, it shows a, a deficit of 200 million. Would you mind taking us into that further? I want to know how much of your budget is uh, dedicated towards the development of cricket in the rural 
areas, especially villages and uh, townships. Other question is, uh, how do you ensure that talented players from uh, less privileged schools are taken on board so that ultimately they develop into professional into professional players. My last question, Chair, on the issue of disciplinary process. Don't you think it might be interpreted, President, by the, the society out there that you are removing a, and the intention is to replace that black CEO with a white CEO? Thanks very much, Chair. Those are my questions. Honorable members, because of this um, uh, process, I won't say uh, number two. I've said keep oh. your numbers. The second, yes. uh, number two, is Honorable Papa, Honorable Matingosi, Honorable Mklongo, Honorable Malomani, Honorable Adams, Honorable Chaperson, in that order. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. Um, am I audible? Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, I, I want to thank the members of Cricket South Africa for the presentation. And um, also just um, to Mr. Jockville, just making a joke about the acting career. Um, I'm fully aware of the situation of um, the CEO, Mr. Moru, and the disciplinary that's going on. Chairperson, yes, I want to start off um, as Mr. Nzani, um, the board chairperson, was just confirming that the report will be out today and the investigation on the previous CEO, Mr. Moru. Um, after costing Cricket South Africa 80 million rand sponsorship loss per year from Standard Bank. And you can, if we want to know if you can perhaps give us just a short outcome, um, as it will be out today, um, will you give this committee a short outcome? And um, we want to know if this forensic um, investigation is completed or it, will it only then be, as you said, end of June? I just want to make sure is that part of the um, report coming out today, the forensic investigation as well. Um, then, um, we were talking about women, and I was quite disturbed when Professor Shirley Zinn res resigned and um, as a director, and she was part of your management. And I wanted to know, was this part of the previous CEO, Mr. Moru, and um, are you intending getting people with knowledge uh, like her back? Um, then on my second question, as there will only be 200 people allowed at the Solidarity Cup that will start on the 27th of June. I would like to know, um, will the games be broadcasted by DSTV, SABC, um, on the broadcasting rights? As we know, there are a lot of money involved with this. Um, will, will the especially most vulnerable people, most people, especially kids in the disadvantaged committees that would like to watch cricket, um, will not most probably have access to DSTV. What will the situation be there on that? Um, then we heard the acting CEO talking on the relationship between Cricket SA and SACA, Cricket Association. I'd like to get a little bit more info on that. We know that that relationship went south. I would like to know if that's back on track. And... Um, Exceeding with their transformation status as per the EPG, which is the Eminent Persons Group report. We see that they've exceeded that. And also by demonstrating redress through inclusion for all. I would like to know, does the Department of Sport actually give you a fair bite of their budget? As you have mostly rely on sponsorships, and we know that sponsorships are getting thin and spread far um, apart. Um, there's a lot of sports that's getting a big bite um, of the yearly budget, and I would like to know if um, you are really getting the right share. Um, I just feel that some sports, um, it, um, it gets uh, more than others, quite much more than others, and um, some sports um, 
um, bodies have to actually go and look for these sponsorships, which, as I say, is not always available. Um, and I'm asking this because I started playing cricket when I was five years old. My children played cricket, and I'm still now playing cricket with Parliament. So I would like to know, um, we are um, a cricket, rugby, and football nation, and um, this is really close to our hearts. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is uh, Majin Guzzi speaking. As you said, you are not going to introduce us. Uh, let me first um, welcome the presentation by Cricket South Africa. Um, yes, this is um, a comedy that deals with cultural and uh, arts aspects as well. Uh, the very first uh, issue of transformation that I'm seeing here is the the people's names and surnames uh, must be pronounced properly. The point in question I'm talking about is uh, Mr. Fowles mentioning of his president as uh, Mr. Chris Nzani. Nzani. I think if it is written like that, it should be like that. That is the very first um, uh, respect that we need to have uh, to each other and also with the, 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 the sport as well. The, the strict cricket cannot be a game changer for me uh, because the, 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 the very aspect of, of, of the kids playing cricket in the streets is because there were no spaces that were, were allocated for kids to play cricket as well. You know, in, in the, 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 there were no piece of, piece of land that were allocated for that to happen. So I don't see it as, as a game changer, but it needs to have places that must be uh, created uh, for such spots uh, as Honorable Siabi has, has uh, you know, said that we should have space like that in, 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 uh, in our, uh, uh, you know, fundamental uh, stages of uh, black schools and black society. And I'd like to know uh, why was uh, Standard Bank uh, withdrawing uh, to be uh, a sponsor for, for, for cricket? And uh, also, it, it, it puzzled me that uh, the, the, uh, Mr. Fowell was talking about the, the you know, he, he pointed it as, as an outstanding thing that there will be a, a woman coaching men team. Uh, why is it being uh, a, 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 an extraordinary thing to say that there'll be a woman coaching a men's team rather than saying that the coach would be uh, Miss or Mrs. So and so? So I think that the, the, it, it, it starts from there that uh, women are being looked at as, as, as a special thing, that they'll be doing something for men. Um, and on, 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 the, on the president's uh, cricket said, I want to know um, whether the president, uh, Mr. Chris Senzani, is it by choice that uh, he was not mentioning the names of the people affected uh, and, uh, by, by, the, by this uh, uh, the, the the problem that 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 this cricket is having. So, yeah, I will for now. I will, I will read chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, chair. Sapomsonga. I note the presentation. According to this presentation, as of the first of June, the report must be available. But the CSA is failing this committee because they did not even present this report to us. I think it's a gray air on its own. One thing that I wanted to find out, what is the board going to do? Let's say they exercise their right, they, they did not exercise their right accordingly. What are they going to do? Let's say they find out that this duty that they've done, it's not according to the law. For an example, I wanted to find out the same approach which was used for Tabang More, is it going to be used to the entire board? And is this entire process fair according to CSA policy and labor law? Is this process consistent with the law following the processes of Mr. Longat? If not, why not? Where are the reports suggested that it warrants Mr. Moore to be suspended. We don't see any report. I wanted to find out, since there are serious allegations of conflict 
among sport members. How far have you dealt with those board members? Why the board members today did not resign? If they have resigned, when did they resign? Why are we not told about all these board members? Will, will we get a report that is clearly, you know, for an example, the president will say something to the media and the acting CEO will say something. Who must we listen to? To the president or to the acting CEO? Uh, please assist Honorable Mklong. Uh, uh, something happened. He was still talking. Jabu. You must buy data. You must buy data. Jabu. Jabu. I'll call him, Chair, just to see where he is. I think Chair, can you can continue. Me, I'll call yeah. him. Yes, you have just cut off Honorable Mklongo. Where, 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 Chair? I'm you. Where? Okay. Where, where, where did, you, did you get the... Will the board members... You were saying that we must... No, no. You were saying that who must we listen to between oh, the okay. president and the acting CEO. So continue from there. Okay, Thank you. I was saying that, Chair, because the acting CEO said the forensic report will be given to the public, but they failed even to give us this report today. But the president came out and saying something differently. Who must we listen to? One thing that I wanted to find out, for Mr. Smith to come out in public saying he does not understand transformation. I don't understand that. Are you dealing with it as... CSA South Africa. Did you explain to him what is transformation, oh, Mr. Smith, General Smith? Did you explain to him? Mr. Smith went all out to say he supports the seat of ICC chairperson, not you, Mr. Uh, president. He supports only the seat of ICC president chairperson, not you as the president. Now, I wanted to find out, don't you see this as a subordinate? Was he, is Mr. Smith going to be charged or not? Are we going to uh, fail, uh, uh, process the same process that we've done with uh, Mr. Moret? For the past seven months, he's been suspended. They did not charge him. I don't see any charges. They did not even present to us today these charges. One thing that I wanted to find out from the, the president, the appointment was done since December. And the process to date, nothing has happened. What is happening? When are you going to charge Mr. Moore? Why did Mo Mr. Moore went to work last week? It was Thursday or Tuesday, but he went to work. And the office, can you confirm, was the office closed for him to come in? Because we we're reading different reports what happened. But tell us exactly what happened. I wanted to find out, Chair, regarding the progress made in the project, regarding the organizational estimate, what is happening with that? I wanted to find out with, regarding the reports, uh, Chairperson. Will it, we get the reports now or at the end of June? If, why not now? And why the press is saying tomorrow or today? What is happening, Chair? For now, Chair, I'll, I'll just hold and then I'll comment later. I have more questions to ask, Chair, unless you can give me another bite to find out from Cricket South Africa. Are they getting their income state that the balance sheet at the end of the 30th June, it's more than what they have. I know Mr. Mr. Mklongo. Okay, Honorable okay. Mklongo, we are going to have the second part. Thank uh, you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Chairperson. Where is Let the also... Mklongo? Thank you, Chairperson. Let me also welcome the presentation by Cricket South Africa. But the first thing that I want to speak about is that I'm not happy with the representation that they came with today, and it must be noted in the minutes, so that next time there must be women that are also present when they are coming as board members or as leaders in the in CSA. 
Also, I want to speak on the issue of transformation. Yes, Cricket South Africa was the first one to make sure that they do they do need transformation. They are having a green light. But it seems as if even today, we can't see the green light, what is happening. If you can check the leadership in the Cricket SA, it's only white dominant. You check the... the in their report, it's only white dominant, where the head of the coaches and whatsoever, it's only white people. So how are they going to transform and make sure that next time the head or the coaches are black people? The other thing that I want to ask is how much of the budget goes towards cricket development in the farms and villages in their budget? The other question is that Will Cricket South Africa be taking further criminal actions or are they going to lay charges against these employees as they were found to be guilty? The other thing is that can they take us through to their... Uh, but also, oh, let me not report, repeat it about their balance and their statements. And then how does Cricket South Africa ensure less privileged schools get equal opportunity? If you can check the, the leadership of the, from long time ago, I don't know, I don't know, I can't tell which years, the leaders are from boys' schools, not from disadvantage. How are they going to be the captains? If every time these captains are from the boys' schools, where and how are they going to make sure that they develop also those who are from rural so that one day we can see a person from the rural areas being the leader of or being a captain in cricket south africa thank you thank you honorable uh, members this opportunity to, as I said, when I was my opening, month, here we are today. And Excuse me, Chair Pesson. Huh? Excuse me, Chair, on your oh, list. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry, Honorable Adams. Honorable Adams, take the... Thank you. Thank you, Chair Pesson. Can you hear me? Chair Pesson, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ms. Adams. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. Let me also welcome the presentation by um, Cricket South Africa. My questions to the board is, according to the 2018-2019 EPG transformation scorecard, Cricket South Africa has not achieved the targets in terms of gender black African repre uh, representation in the senior male national team as well as the female national and under 19 teams can cricket south africa provide the committee with the reasons thereof what plans are in place to ensure that targets are reached in the new future and then the second question what has been the challenges leading to Cricket South Africa only achieving 70% of its self set targets in 2018 and 2019. Um, third question, Chairperson. The target set by Cricket South Africa in the underage category of the female national teams in teams of black African player representation are too low. For example, 24 out of 27 percent. Hence, it was easier to achieve those targets. What are the reasons for such low targets being set? Why can't they use the same targets as the senior national teams? My last question, um, Chairperson, what is the state of franchise cricket in non-metropolitan cities of South Africa. I thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Can anyone thank hear me? Thank you so much. Um, who's that now? We finish with Honorable Adams. I was thinking that number seven is myself. Yes, Chair. Oh, Chair, okay. we can allow you to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, when we started this meeting, uh, I've, I've said, why even today, Cricket South Africa, we coming with the men's club? And I was saying, when we getting to discuss and uh, giving suggestions and way forward, I'm going to repeat this. You know, this is the time that we must not compromise about transformation. The reversal of it, we cannot just keep quiet as this committee. Uh, you know, as I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that uh, every now and then in your slides, you are talking about assisting the rural uh, people, uh, rural uh, kids who, who play this uh, cricket. But you are still even now saying that uh, you said it in the past uh, parliament. Uh, fortunately for us, we were in this committee, but don't have any statistics saying that since the uh, inception of the democratic uh, government we've done ABC in rural areas. How many times must we ask this? Some of, of some of us were young at heart in the sport. We have started this sport before unbending. When all people except the a certain community which is white were benefiting. And when we came to the democrats and when we, we, we put policies, we did put policy and we have a, something we call the EPG a, for all the, the codes. And you you presented what you are going to to do. I'm, I'm happy that I've heard that the minister uh, and 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 the, the 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 team they are here. This is the time that we must uh, effect the sanctions in each and every sport code who's not following the transformation. We cannot serve in this committee whilst uh, before we were playing netball, some of us, we were in the athletics, uh, some of us. It was not easy being a black uh, child of then regime that we must have the benefits of what we were thinking now. Here we are, and we, we are here with you, and we don't uh, want you to take any a person who's not qualifying, but how are they going to qualify? Because the resources of some sport codes is still looking in the, it's not in, not in the inclusive, inclusiveness. There are certain uh, people who still benefit. As I'm sitting here, I would love to hear in this board, what have you done? Uh, before you suspend all other the, these people. Because when we called you uh, last time, you canceled our meeting before we have been, this all what we are seeing uh, of uh, suspending that one and that one. You canceled what was, some of you were already in Cape Town, the headings. We were thinking that by this time will come with uh, something that we are saying that no, we are agreeing with you. But as I'm sitting here, Honorable Mshongo, I didn't see uh, what you have saw the somebody in this uh, team of this board that is saying that 
what is transformation? How can you ask that? Do you think that, let's say, thank you, Honorable Minister, uh, I know that uh, there are those things which we suppose to act uh, these sanctions, we will, we will give you the mandate as, as a comment. If people, they don't want uh, to do what is supposed to be done here in this committee, we are no longer going to be just friendly, but we want to be friendly. We are giving you another chance, but I'm suspecting it's too much. We can't not have the, the 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 women we can't have not to have uh, the black and white in your board why is it not like that so i'm saying uh, today uh, we are here uh, usually when you are coming to a committee we need not to be angry we need to face facts but how, how long must we say that it transforms? I must tell you, as com honorable members were saying, this is a reversal of what we have done. But now today, you are doing such things as if we are not working as a collective. I didn't hear also so what the president was saying. I'm suspecting the very same president was elected by the collective. He can't go out saying that he's regretting. You didn't put yourself in this position. I, I, I'm suspecting that there's something wrong. If you've said that you were wrong, even if you were feeling the pinch, you can't re uh, retreat. How are you going to retreat? As we're still having serious problems. You didn't put yourself there. I thank you. Uh, on, uh, we can give it to the cricket South Africa. I don't know if minister is here. He does hear what um, uh, the committee, which is doing a monitoring to themselves. Maybe if you want to say something, because I'm suspecting um, they do sit with the department. But I've noticed that once we uh, ask them to, to come, I'm hearing that yesterday and the other day, which means if we didn't call a subject to be corrected, we didn't call this meeting, uh, these meetings that they're saying we're going to finalize today and other day, it means that we're doing our monitoring, honorable members. Uh, honorable minister, we want to take uh, anything that you want to say to us as a committee. Uh, if I may, uh, Chair, perhaps at the end. Oh. Um, uh, President of the people that elected you to, to be a president, Please answer us with your collective. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you for an opportunity to explain a few things. There's quite a lot of questions. I will attempt most of them. And then those that I cannot, or in terms of specific figures, the acting CEO will deal with them. Uh, the first question, Chair, that I, I was asked by Honorable Siabi uh, was that, uh, why did I stay at a press conference on Tuesday evening when I was asked whether there is any threat? And I indicated three things. The first one was that we have not yet where we can say that we have radically transformed cricket. That's what the issue indicated. The second one Just was a that moment, there's something which is making noise. Um, the president, there's something which is having a sharp noise 
at your background. I don't know what is it. It's Maybe not on my side. Job. Yeah. It's not on your side, Jabu. No. It's not on the side of president. Try to check mm -hmm. this noise. We've muted. Try to listen. Muted, okay. Okay. okay, president. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Let me listen. Yeah. The yes, second, president. the second issue that I said I would uh, regret in terms of the term of office is that we have not been in a position to communicate properly the things, the positive things that Cricket South Africa is doing, because we relied mainly on 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 the media to do so. Uh, we have not had a, a a platform where we can sort of. Uh, showcase our own achievements, the things that we're doing, which are positive. Then the last part was what uh, Honorable CIB has asked me, and also I think you've done the same, Chair. Let me contextualize my answer to that question. My term of office should have ended last year in September. In 2018, in a board meeting in East London, there was a in a members council meeting. There was a resolution taken by the council to say that they will request the president to stay for another year. Uh, I did not say yes, I did not say no. Then uh, in June, in Johannesburg, in Pretoria to be specific, the question was again put before the members council. And uh, I requested to, to leave the meeting when this matter was discussed. And uh, when I was called back to the meeting, I was informed that uh, the, the council has agreed that I should extend my term. The reason why I say in hindsight, I should not have agreed is very simple. Out of that, there was a concerted attack on me by the media, claiming that I had lobbied the support of all the presidents and also changed the constitution, the MOI of CSA, to allow the president to serve an additional year. And, and uh, as a result of that attack on the president, unfortunately, the organization suffered collateral damage because there was a, a, an attack and to, to suggest that I had engineered the process of serving an extra term. The constitution of CSA has not been amended to effect the change in relation to the extension of the term of a president. That decision was taken in line with the Companies Act, which allows the board that it can extend by special resolution the term of one of its directors for a year on an annual basis, but that cannot exceed nine years. Constitution of CSA has not been altered. And, and, and uh, I have not in any given point in time lobbied the members to do so. And I said at the press conference, Maybe it is because of the view that I have of leadership. Because to me, leadership means it's an obligation to serve. Once elected, you have an obligation to serve. And if people elect you, and if people request you to stay on for a certain period of time, you subject yourself to that directive. It, it does not mean there is anything uh, that is happening within the organization that has caused me to do so. But I felt that because of this concerted attack and uh, innuendos that I had engineered the extension of my term, and unfortunately the organization as a result of that suffered collateral damage. So that that honorable CIB is the context why I said that. Because I respect CSA as an organization. I would not be want to create a situation where uh, because of an attack directed at me, CSA also becomes part of the victim in the process. I'll move 
Honorable Chair, to the next question. Uh, whether are there any indications? In fact, I think this question is related uh, to many other questions that have been asked relating to transformation, whether there are any, in fact, there, there's a, a view that there are signs of repression. What is the plan for us to address that? And, and, and also, there are other questions that when I address this question, I hope I would also touch on those questions as well. The, the CSA is committed to transformation, and it is true that we were amongst the first, if not the first, uh, national code to really drive the process of transformation, and we still con continue to do so. Uh, even today, we have an induction process today, we dedicated today to transformation, and it's continuing. Uh, and and, and uh, our commitment to transformation is not based on the fact that we have to pass uh, the EPG processes. It is an obligation that we have. And what the EPG processes is doing also is putting impetus uh, in ensuring that we don't fall behind the targets and also commitment that we have made as an organization, as a code. Uh, over the last few months, uh, what has happened is, if we go back to 2019, Cricket had a World Cup in England. Our team performed poorly. If you go back again to 2015, Cricket World Cup was hosted in Australia and New Zealand. Our team went as far as uh, the semi final, a match that they should have won because of a number of contextual issues that match was not won. And what we did thereafter, we instituted a panel to look at the performance of our national teams. One of the uh, recommendations of that panel was that we need a director of coaching. That director of coaching should be the person who's going to ensure that the uh, coaching of cricket in CSA in South Africa, there is a common DNA uh, and there's a common philosophy so that when a player is coached at an under 11, under 13, under 15 and so on, he is coaching the same within the same philosophical uh, environment and also he is not surprised when he goes to the next level. When we, we, we performed poorly at the World Cup in England, uh, we said and said, let's go back to the 2015 recommendations of the panel and look for a person to appoint as a director of cricket. It's a massive responsibility. It's a massive uh, opposition to have because it requires somebody who, who knows the game of cricket, who has played the game of cricket, when he speaks, when that person speaks, the entire system should be able to listen. When that person drives a particular strategy, the entire system is, is ready and able to listen. And you needed somebody, therefore, who would, would have a track record in the game to fill that position. Uh, unfortunately, we went through a process of interviews. I don't want to go into that long story. And, and uh, the candidate that emerged from that process uh, was Graham Smith. And because of a number of issues, Graham Smith initially did not want to take the position. I had to engage him and talk to him. Uh, eventually, as we know, that uh, he was appointed an interim director of, of cricket. Uh, until he was appointed a permanent director. The other issue is we suspended a black CEO and we appointed a white interim CEO or acting CEO. And, and to, to many people, that created a, an impression that there is a repression in terms of transformation. And, and if you look broadly, in, in, in the offerings and also in the organization that is Cricket South Africa. And you look in a, var in a, in a variety of levels, uh, you will find that transformation that we've committed to ourselves uh, 
has not necessarily regressed, but because at the top you've appointed two key personnel that, that happen to be white, and therefore there is a view that there is a, a regression in transformation. We, we are the first to say that uh, we are not where we want to be, because our belief is that transformation, you cannot say I have achieved, now I'm doing nothing more, I'll just sit back and relax. It's a, it's a constant commitment that you need to, to have. And, and uh, in line with transformation, the transformation agenda, in 2015, we signed a tripartite agreement between the Department of Basic Education, Department then of Sports and Recreation at the time, and Cricket South Africa, particularly trying to address the challenges that we face when we get into the rural areas and township schools in as far as cricket development is concerned. Uh, just to give uh, honorable members a, an example, cricket is an expensive sport. You can play rugby, you can play uh, soccer, you in any open space, in any open field, you can make a makeshift field and practice rugby and so on. But with cricket, you can do that, but it does not help you. You need a specific, uh, particular field where cricket will be played, where cricket will be practiced. And therefore, we had that arrangement, that tripartite agreement between the two departments of state as well as cricket. And in that, we said, we said as cricket that we will offer the expertise that we have in terms of running programs. And then the Department of Sport will take over the excellent, uh, uh, excellent, excellent performance uh, system. And then the Department of Education, will, uh, basic education, will take the responsibility to ensure that school stage that has not yet been fully implemented. What we also did, I'm trying to answer a number of questions under this question. What we also did, because the development of cricket, if people go back maybe in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, was based on the school system. Because school is a controlled environment. And cricket began its development uh, and, and uh, located it within each and every school, in each and every community, which worked at the time, but it's no longer sustainable. Because if you look in the villages, maybe some of you have noticed this, many schools in the villages are closing, and many schools in the villages, sport is no longer a big issue. And particularly because you may not have every person or every teacher is able in a, in a position to coach cricket. And it's not only cricket, even other codes as well. And also you look at one of the issues which relates to natural attrition uh, in terms of people leaving schools, in terms of people coming to schools. Uh, you have a, an aging teacher cohort in many schools. And therefore, as a result of that sport uh, uh, is, uh, is suffering. What we have done, we have clustered schools into what we call cricket hubs, uh, so that in a particular area, there will be what we call a hub of cricket, which means we'll have a point where coaching takes place, and then the neighboring schools, neighboring clubs, players from those uh, schools and clubs who deserve to be coached at a better level would be coached at that hub so that they can play more games in that hub. And then from the hub, the hubs would play against each other, one another, and then they, they progress to what is called a regional performance hub, uh, or kind of regional performance center. The main purpose of that is where schools used to be the necessary for cricket development, that is no longer happening. Now you needed to find space, I mean, a place where you locate development in these communities. We put coaches there, 
we fund those coaches and uh, we ensure that these hubs play games because if you want to compete uh, properly in cricket you need to play more games if if you go to a an advantage school well resourced school uh, you find that players there boys and girls that play cricket they will play in excess of 20 games in a season excess of 15 and so on in a season but if you go to townships as well as rural areas you find players playing cricket there they will play about five four six games in a season that cannot be comparable so our hub system seeks to address that the other issue that relates to to transformation is how much resources do we allocate to transformation uh, i think if we had listened when this acting ceo was making a presentation on an average we spend more than 300 million rand in in, in cricket development uh, in order to target areas where we have these hubs in order to target areas where uh, we have schools that are playing cricket and the other factor that is coming in in, in the issue of transformation especially access at rural areas because of uh, urbanization impact uh, you don't have many parents staying in the rural areas they move and move to urban centers hence you have an influx of cricketers in the urban centers and especially in some of the so former model C schools. And then then the, the, the other issue is uh, how much, okay, I've answered that one, how much budget to put aside. Then how, how do we accelerate talented players from rural schools? Rural schools? What, what, we, what we do in the hub system you have your best players in that area. Women, I mean girls and boys, and then you take them to the next level, the regional performance center. They get proper coaching, they get uh, proper conditioning, and then you take them in what we call academies uh, at the provincial setup, at the regional setups. We have academies there. We take them there, and uh, the they, they will get part in, I mean, be part of our under age weeks, your under 15, under 13, under 15, under 18, and so on. Then you take them to academies. At the top will be the under 19 academy. Each and every affiliate has an under 19 academy. And we have under 19 academy weeks. Most of the time, we, you, we lose black players in the system of cricket. Immediately, they leave high school and they go to Tibet colleges, to universities. That's where you lose them. And, and, and uh, because when you get there, the focus now is no longer on cricket, but its focus now is to look at other economic uh, imperatives that the child must ensure that he secures or she secures a career. And, and uh, you miss them, you lose them in the system. Then the other question that uh, I think I need to address myself on is the removal of a black CEO placed by a white CEO. We, we, we did not look at the color. We looked at efficiency. And, and uh, we did not look at the color. We looked at you needed to, we had to suspend a CEO because of certain critical aspects which we had subjected to a forensic investigation uh, because we wanted a situation where when we act we have quantifiable information that we're going to say the CEO is accountable for this and therefore let's take action in relation to what the CEO is accountable for and and uh, we had to look around and and because you need a somebody who's going to to, to hit the ground running and we looked around and we found uh, Dr. Fall and we said, Dr. Fall, this is the situation. We want you to come in so that you, you steady the ship. We did not look at, at his uh, race, but we looked at his uh, skill and leadership. Just 
Zadu, can you deal with this question before I go to the next one? Can you deal with this question as to how COVID has affected us and also address the matter that relate to the last year's uh, budget deficit of 200 million? Uh, I think you had managed um, to do that. I think you need to, to, to clarify it a bit. Then I'll deal with other questions. Thank you, uh, uh, um, Mr. President. Chairperson, if I may, I'll, I'll, I'm also president, if I may, would, would address the um, um, some of the rural uh, funding that uh, we deal with as, as, as well, Mr. President. The COVID-19 um, uh, crisis for now hasn't affected us um, in a negative way, hence um, we will have a, a, a profit situation with our annual financial statements. Um, 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 being um, announced soon. However, um, it will have an effect going um, forward. The, the biggest effect would be the congestion of the bilateral cricket uh, in the world. So it is linked to incoming tours. If it is too congested and we lose out on um, especially Indian um, content, home content can have a massive effect on us. Um, uh, Chairperson, if I might just share the information as much as if we um, lose and or not play three T20 scheduled to, to India, we can lose as much as a 150 million rand. That is um, a quite a significant number. But for now, since we were in the, the off season, um, it did, did not affect us so much. However, um, it will be very difficult to replace a sponsorship like Standard Bank um, at 73 million rand a year just because of the economic climate. The international sponsor that we have signed is not um, on that level. Um, it is uh, on around 50% of, of that level. So we are still looking for um, a team sponsor for the Proteas. And you can imagine um, a chairperson with the low level of predictability, the negative economic climate, it will be difficult to, um, to, to replace. Um, in terms of our expenditure, the president was correct that we um, allocate around uh, 330 million last year, financial year this year, 336 million rand um, to 14 affiliates for amateur cricket or development cricket. And also rightly so that we created a app or RPC, a regional um, performance centers. Um, so that is the amount that is divided among the 14 um, affiliates and should cover um, every corner of South Africa in theory, but as um, I think the committee members rightly stated that the rural areas uh, needed um, more attention and, and a focused approach. So to that, we also add uh, 1.5 million rand to the Fort Hare Academy. There's a rural provincial week that we spent uh, 4.1 million rand annually on. It's also on a 17 rural week, and these weeks are focused on um, players from rural areas. We then have a further nine hubs um, that collectively receive 4 million rand designated for, for rural areas and then one RPC that receives 520,000 um, rand. That adds up to 12.5 million rand. Um, Chairperson, Mr. President, if, 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 if that is fine. Thank, thank you, Jacques. Then I'll, I will go to the question that uh, question that Honorable Faber uh, asked. One of them was whether we are in a position to share the outcome of the forensic investigation. Uh, at this stage, I think I also need to clarify this. At this stage, we have not received the outcome or the report. What I indicated is that there will be a report that will be received today before close of business today. And that report will go to the person who was elected by the members council to be the conduct with the, with the investigators. That report will deal with matters that surround the suspended CEO. So that once that report is received and then requ required action could be taken as soon as possible. Then by the end of the month, before the end of the month, the forensic auditors have promised us that they will give us the full and complete report. You would, you would have seen in the slides the targets and the milestones that they had indicated. 
and that by the end of the month, before the end of the month, we'll receive that report. What, what we will do, uh, we will obviously share the information that is in the report uh, in as far as the law allows us to do. And uh, we'll share that information with the public, we'll share it with the committee as well. Then uh, the other question was, why did Professor Shelley Zinn uh, resign? In fact, that Professor Shelley Zinn, Zinn resigned. Uh, and are we then committed as a CSA board to bring people of similar stature to the board? We have done that. Uh, we have uh, appointed three independent directors who are very skilled, well qualified, and, and uh, they are part of the induction process that is going on today. And, and uh, I'm sure we can share uh, with the committee through you, Honorable Chairperson, they are they are background, they are CVs. We have done that. We're quite comfortable that we have uh, brought in people who are going to to make a telling impact at CSA. Then uh, the other question is the relationship between Cricket South Africa and uh, the Players Union, SACA. And, and, and I always refer to, to this as a relationship of necessity. Because we need soccer, we cannot have Cricket South Africa running without the players. And the players, surely, I, they, they need Cricket South Africa. And it's a relationship that we need to nurture. And uh, we, we, we had moved from a position, a relationship that is antagonistic but to a relationship that is quite cognizant of the challenges that we're facing. But uh, we are willing and we're currently working together in the review of our cricket structures and in the review of our domestic system. We are continuing to, to repair that relationship. We are continuing to work it's very hard to ensure that that relationship works for cricket, not only for Cricket South Africa, not only for soccer, but for the cricket in this country as well. Jacques, can you deal with the matter of the three-team three cricket and broadcasting? Um, President, I will do so. The broadcasting um, rights currently um, has not been sold. It's a once-off um, event. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cost. We've made it available for um, Supersport to pick up the cost and uh, we are in negotiations with with um, SABC to see either a delayed or highlight package so that we have optimal reach. We've also offered it to um, our international broadcasters. Um, unfortunately, um, broadcasting um, uh, is sold uh, on a four-year basis and there's a budget for it, so there's, there wouldn't be any uptake for this, and, and you then just end up with a cost, the production cost um, um, thereof, which, which Supersport will pick up. We, but we are in negotiations to make sure that um, we do have a feed in some way um, to SABC um, chairperson, if that helps you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacques. Then the other question that was asked was whether we receive funding from the Ministry of Sport, uh, Recreation, Arts and Culture. The, the, the question is very, very relevant. Uh, but the, our, our answer is that we have a very good uh, relationship with the ministry, uh, with the officials, and, and uh, they give us uh, funding. Uh, but that funding that they give us uh, is not a lot of money. If I'm not mistaken, the last time we received money, I think in the previous financial year, Jacques was two million from the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture uh, in, the, in the previous financial year. Uh, that there is a, a view, uh, I'm not necessarily saying it is shared by the department that uh, cricket uh, uh, has enough money and uh, that view, unfortunately, is not necessarily correct. But we, we, we receive support as and when we receive, we, we, we require that support from the ministry. 
for instance, when we, we, we make as cricket, we make our money when we're hosting games, uh, into the country and the ministry will always assist us in ensuring that we get all the necessary support that we need uh, on those matters. Jacques, maybe you want to add something here because I need to recharge my battery. Thank you, um, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I like that President. Part, yeah? <laughs> Thank you for, for the opportunity. Um, the, the benefits um, from Cricket South Africa is, is uh, from the department itself as it relates to the um, benefits in, a, in, in terms of hosting events. We, we plan to um, bid for um, a number of ICC events and the ministry will, will help us um, um, a lot with that. Um, we did receive additional um, 500,000 designated for women's cricket from the department department as well, um, Mr. President, um, and which we are very, very thankful for. Um, our women's team has, has done us proud both in bilaterals and, and in um, the World Cup, and that is something I think that we um, need to build on. There was also a question referred to the 654 million rand loss. Um, during a previous presentation um, to the committee. That refers to the four-year um, cycle, um, our budgeting cycle, and that is correct. Um, that um, has improved um, with about 100 and 120 to 150 million, depending on um, the adjustments currently, and we hope to also improve that situation. So it should be around 400 um, a million rand um, as a loss over the, the four years. The, the cycle ends next year, and then the next four-year cycle um, will start. Um, uh, Chairperson, Mr. President. Thank, thank you, Jacques. Then I, I will address the question that were asked by Honorable Matlingosi. Honorable Matlingosi is questioning whether we correct when we say street cricket is uh, the game changer in the manner in which we're trying to reposition cricket and its competitions. In the, indeed, uh, Honorable Matlingosi, uh, I remember when we were growing up, you play rugby on the street, you play soccer, play cricket. But what we're saying here now is different. Let, let me make an analogy with our KFC mini cricket program. That program is very important to cricket because that program has a massive reach and uh, you, you, you reach over 180,000 young kids to participate in that program. And uh, with, with street cricket, we're trying to revive the interest in the game and uh, we're trying to make it part of everyday life of the, of the youngsters at their own localities. So that the hope is immediately you, you revive that interest and then you can translate it into more organized cricket. Uh, so that out of that bulk of uh, youngsters playing cricket in the streets, then you are able to get out of that, you're able to develop interest and then you translate it into organized cricket. This is born out of this kind of an experience. And, and we want to link, we're linking it with the other competitions that we are putting in place. And uh, it is linked in this sense. We have focused, we found that when we analyze and go through all our competition structures, and we realize that we get almost everybody into cricket. And as they progress through the cricket uh, pipeline, uh, you find that there are people who should not necessarily be in the so-called semi-professional setup and then professional setup because their skill and talent is not at that level. These are the people that you could channel uh, to go and play more club cricket and to go and play more social cricket uh, so that you help to revive uh, the interest at that level. And then you, you, you are able to get the best out of your mass program so that you take this best and you put them through uh, talent acceler acceleration programs so that you are able to get now your top players. So the, our street, uh, street cricket that we're talking about is intended to ensure that you rekindle and uh, you sort of inject interest uh, at the lowest level. And then out of that, you channel that interest 
into organized cricket. Then the other question was, why did Standard Bank leave? Standard Bank's contract was expiring at the end of April 2020. And then Standard Bank engaged us and said that they would not want uh, to renew their contract given the challenges that we went through during the period of November, December last year. And, and uh, therefore, uh, they did not surprise us because they talked to us, they engaged us on this. And I think their view was that they were not happy uh, uh, and I could not expect them to be happy with the challenges and the crisis situation that we found ourselves in at the time. Then the other question was the names of the people that were brought before the disciplinary committee uh, or pro uh, disciplinary processes. Normally, as CSA, we do not uh, divulge names of people that we are bringing before the DC. But uh, we can do so because the, the, this has been an outcome or there has been outcomes out of this. We, the CEO suspended three senior executives. Point of order, Jabu, what is going on? No, Jabu, what is going on? We can't uh, uh, hear Chabot, I, think, I think it's lost connection. Um, I'll try to find what's happening, Jeff. I think it's just lost connection. Maybe due, the, due to the charging of the battery. Chairperson? Chairperson? Yes, honorable ma'am. We have the deputy yeah. president. We have the Come deputy again. president. The, the list can he respond to show that they're working together? Okay. A deputy president, uh, can you take some questions? Yes. Thank you, honorable. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, honorable chair. Thank you. Honourable Chair, um, the um, names of the of the that have been um, found guilty have been charged are uh, the Chief Operations Officer, Nasai Apia. Then it was the Acting Chief Financial Officer, Tianda Nkuta. Um, then it was the Sales Head, Commercial and Sales Head, Clive Extian. Um, the, the fourth person was a junior, a junior person, was the Deline Nolan. And yeah, so those are the four, the four key ones. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Those are the four uh, staff that have been suspended, that were suspended. And the disciplinary processes and outcomes have been confirmed. Um, on the Chief Operations Officer, Mr. Nasa Apia. We are waiting um, on the outcome of the appeal um, uh, appeal hearing um, that should be provided very soon. Um, uh, Clive Extian has lodged uh, his matter with the CCMA, and we are waiting on, on further particulars and details of when that matter will be heard. Um, yeah, so at this point, that, that is an update around the staff members that were disciplined. The acting CEO, we are waiting for the final, for the report on, on that investigation. And soon we'll be able, we'll be in a position to, to take the necessary action regarding the, the suspended CEO. That is around the, the disciplinary matters, Honorable Chair. Deputy President, you, you don't want to take other remaining uh, questions to answer. What did you note that is not yet answered when the President was uh, answering the questions? I, th I think uh, the key question that has come up repeatedly was around transformation. Um, I think it's an issue around, um, was further raised around white coaches are dominant. Um, 
and you know the, the woman lack of woman representation. Um, I think well, I can just reconfirm that Cricket South Africa is totally committed to transformation. Um, we have it as part of our key imperatives. Um, you know, we, in terms of our change, the change in demand in the market, we are we are making every effort uh, to ensure that we are st sustainable, we are relevant and competitive. But in that, um, in terms of the cricket, our access um, and skills and capacity is 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 critical. Um, we we investing. Strategically, we cannot hear the president and the deputy president. Strategically, yeah? uh, this answer my question. I was expecting so the nice. honorable members. I was expecting the business <laughs> I was expecting this with the deputy president because uh, there's something that, that is not on. Uh, it's either you must switch off the video in order that we must hear him clearer uh, and seemingly uh, double check even the president that you see back uh, go on deputy president but you must be aware we can't hear you clearer there's a noise a background noise uh, switch off your video and carry on um, noted, Honourable Chair, my video has been off. Uh, apologies for that noise, it's not this side, but I'll carry on. So, as I was saying, that we will continue to drive our transformation agenda, and we are committed to that agenda to radically transform cricket. Um, Women, uh, again, I just want to highlight on the board, our vacancies have been filled by two, two women, highly qualified and skilled women, uh, that has joined the board recently, uh, and uh, an additional non-independent vacancy was filled. I think in terms of our vacancies in the past six months has now been concluded, and we have a full operational board, um, and in those areas, our targeted areas have been covered. covered. Further, um, I think the president has covered the issues around transformation. Um, I know the one question was asked around criminal charges. Um, once the reports have been presented, the forensic report, Cricket South Africa will look at our, our options in terms of whether um, criminal charges are, are needed. But we'll definitely apply our mind to, to take it doing the right thing um, and, and holding, holding um, the individuals accountable for their actions. We've covered the gender matter, Chair. Um, and, and then I think you've raised, as the chair, honourable chair has raised, um, the issue around our, our delegation and women. Um, I think at this point, uh, one, one has communicated that we have an induction on at the moment, and they're participating in the induction. Um, but we will continue to strive to meet those targets as it is cricket. Um, yeah, I think, Chair, yeah, at this point, um, the press has covered um, the first round of questions in my mind. Um, point, point of thank order. Thank you, Chair. Point of order, Chair. Uh, before that, Honorable Mishonga, I'm going to give you Jabu is president back. Jabu? Jabu? Not yet. Not yet, Chairperson. Okay, Mazo. Uh, before Honorable Mshongo, uh, we need a list of your a composition of your board members. It must be emailed if you are not having it now. Thank you, Honorable Mshongo. Excuse me, Chair. The president is back. Okay, the president Honorable is back. Thank you, Chair. Okay. I, I, if, the, if the President is back, he must start with my questions. All of my questions were not answered. All of them. The President is back, he can respond. 
In, indeed, Chairperson, um, I'm, I'm back. Uh, I think I just had a technical glitch. Uh, the computer just rebooted. I, I'm not sure what questions Mr. Beresford has, has answered, but let me go back to what Honorable Mflongo is saying, because he's saying that his questions are not answered. I will attempt to do so now, Honorable President, Mflongo. may I take it? President, uh, he was answering where you stopped uh, yes. of the mentioning of the names of okay. the suspended members. And uh, he'll also uh, give us um, the confirmation that you are looking at e transformation and also the, pro the problem that you are not having a woman in your presentation. He said it's because today they are doing induction. Yes. Uh, we're supposed to take even one of the women. It's not excuse of induction, but uh, he responded like that. So okay. take yes. the questions from Honorable Mshongo and answer. Thank you, President. Thank, thank you, Mama. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Mshongo, I will, I will address your questions now. Uh, I'm sorry for that glitch. Uh, I think the first question that we asked was whether the processes of disciplining employees, has, has it been fair, has it been in terms of the legal prescripts of the country, has it been in terms of our own uh, disciplinary processes? The answer to that, Honorable Mflongo, is yes. It has been very fair. That is why it has been taken such a long time. Uh, for instance, we, we ensured that all the disciplinary hearings are conducted by external people. We have no connection with Cricket South Africa. We are appointed as a, what you'd call a prosecutor in the DC. We appointed a, an independent person to do that. The chairperson of the DCs, of the various DC uh, committees or hearings, they were independent of CSA. They were not connected with CSA. And, and uh, the outcomes that they gave to us, we processed them in the manner in which they should be in terms of the laws of this country. So it was very, very fair. Then the second question that you asked as to whether there is a problem in the internal in the organization, uh, because you said that uh, there will be different uh, uh, statements made by the president or the acting CEO in the media. And uh, you made reference to the forensic report that we are referring to. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what would have been the other instances, but regarding the forensic report, we have not yet received the report. We are Why going to receive the first part of the report uh, by today. And when that is received, it is going to go through uh, the person who has been appointed by the members council uh, to receive that report. And then the other part of the report, the completed report will be with us before the end of this month. And uh, on any other instances, we have not uh, shared or projected a different uh, information to the public. Uh, in a manner that was intended by us, I, I would not be very sure as to what would be those instances. But on this one of the reports, we don't have the report yet. We'll get a first report and then we'll get a, a, a subsequent report thereafter. Then the other question that you asked is why would Mr. Graham Smith, our director of cricket, uh, say that he does not understand transformation? Uh, I'm not sure uh, why he would say that, because Cricket South Africa has a transformation policy uh, that uh, determines all our activities. E even, for instance, it would determine as to how many players and what would be the composition of the team that should take the field at a particular point in time. Uh, it, it would also remember we we have targets in our system uh, in in our domestic setup in our provincial cr pro professional cricket 
we have certain targets in the national team we have targets that is contained in csa policy and and uh, we allow at, at the national setup we allow flexibility and uh, we we assess those targets on 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 a, on a season by season basis but with our domestic setup what we do each and every game those targets must be met and they are not uh, flexible and 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 uh, I'm, I'm i'm not sure why you would say that because he had played himself uh, in cricket i mean in, in cricket for this country and there were those uh, uh, rules and and uh, we have currently a very clear process of implementation of targets in the system then also you you quoted uh, or you made the reference to a statement that uh, Mr. Smith made when he was addressing a press conference sometime, I think it would have been two or three weeks ago, where he expressed a particular preference uh, for the chairperson strip of the ICC. Uh, if you recall, Mr. Mtlongo, I subsequently uh, made a statement to try and uh, not to, con to contradict what he was saying, but to, to create certain that at this stage cricket south africa has not taken a position because the the nomination process has not yet been opened up by the icc and the icc is still busy dealing with the the process of how to put in place a process that will guide everybody for the nomination the election of the icc chairpersonship and uh, that conf uh, process will be concluded uh, at the ACC meeting next week Thursday. And, and uh, that, 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 that was the explanation that I needed to do so that we are very clear that the board of CSA, the members council at this stage, they have not made any decision as to say in the event that there are candidates that are vying for the chairmanship of the ICC, uh, who will CSA be supporting? So that that mandate is given to the chairman of the CSA board who sits at the ICC level to say, this is the mandate that is given by Cricket South Africa. Then your question number four, Honorable Mshongo, related to why was Tabang Moro at the office last week? Uh, Tabang Moro and his legal team uh, I'm making an aversion that uh, CSA had said there will be Tabang will be suspended for a period of six months, and therefore they calculated the six months from the 5th of December 2019 until the 5th of June 2020. Uh, but uh, the when he came to the office, I was informed that he is at the office outside. At this stage, nobody. Uh, is working from the office. Only security personnel are there because of the COVID-19 situation. Everybody is working from home. Uh, someone would go to the office for whatever they would want to get, to get, but there's nobody. It was not closed on his account. It was closed because everybody is working from home. When I was informed, uh, because it was very cold, I said he must be allowed into the perimeter of the building, but he did not get into the office. But his suspension letter is very clear. Uh, his suspension is linked to the outcome and the conclusion of the forensic investigation. So that at that point, then CSA could take a decision how to uh, move and progress the, his situation. Uh, then project 654. Uh, I think the acting CEO has, has, has uh, looked into this and uh, spoken to this. But let me just give a, a, a bit of a context. Cricket, our, our, we, we, we do what we call, a, it's a, it's a four-year rolling budget. We don't budget for a single year. We budget for a year, but in a context of four years, because our, our income in terms we call the Future Tours Program, uh, where you have countries visiting you, where you visit countries, and, and the, that is uh, uh, given a period of four years and then another four years and then you have what is called a right cycle so our budgeting and our income 
we, we level it off over a period of four years. The reason for that is when you play certain countries, uh, you make if you play India, you play England, you play Australia, you internally they come to us here in South Africa and then you, you make a profit. But if you play the rest, you're making a loss. So what we do, if this year you play India, Australia, next year play uh, Sri Lanka, West Indies, the loss that you make next year, you level it up with the income that and profit that we have made during the years where you had the, the money generating tours into the country. Uh, Project 654, therefore, in that context, we said if we don't do anything by the end of this right cycle, we would have lost an amount of 654 million rand. Therefore, we needed to plan for that. And the result uh, is that we put this in, uh, project in place that uh, whatever we do in our budgeting, in our operations, we must have this in mind that we need to ensure by the time the right cycle ends, we are in a positive uh, situation or at, at, at worst in a, in a break in even budget situation. Hence, we had therefore Project 654, which now as the CO, acting CEO has indicated that uh, the projection is that we have decreased it by more than 200 million rand. So we are around about 400 million and we'll continue to work on it. And we're hoping that by the end of this right cycle, we'll be in a very good position to have said that we mitigated the effects of Pro Project 654 completely. Then, then uh, there was a question I'm not sure who the member was. I could not get uh, the member's ma uh, name, but that related to what are we doing in underprivileged schools in order to develop rural schools and also develop cricket? I think the answer that I gave that relates to the arrangement, the, the, the agreement that we have with the two minis ministries uh, also seeks to answer that and also that we're trying to incorporate schools in our hubs in our hubs and and uh, we we also seek to have partnerships with the municipalities at district level as well as even at local level and and uh, our affiliates are entering in those partnerships uh, we understand in south africa that uh, spending money in sport is not a priority especially for government there are other competing realities and priorities but uh, we 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 do our best to try and build partnerships in order to be able to to ensure that sport is developing those rural schools uh, the other issue that we we needed to address is how to ensure that you have access and then when you identify a, a, a talent, then you nurture that talent. Hence, we have these bursary schemes that we have, especially with the Willowton Group, uh, which uh, uses their brand name Sunfoil, where we have bursaries that we afford uh, to rural uh, to learners in the rural area so that they can go to universities and colleges to have a better chance of uh, <coughs> of, of coaching. <coughs> Excuse the chair. Then uh, the the next question, I think these are questions that were answered uh, asked by Honorable Adams relating to the EPG. Honorable Adams, we are also not happy uh, because you 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 look at the targets that uh, we have not met the Black African targets. Uh, in our in our especially in the past uh, year that was under review and and, and uh, the previous one because we, we we were we are trying to be flexible at the national level to say we measure performance and, and and achievement of targets over a season and then in the lower ranks we measure that match by match uh, you you we, we are also not happy and the plan 
one of the things that we've said, we have a high performance center and a high performance center must give us scientific in, 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 in interventions so that we're able to address the areas where we seem to be to be lacking. One of such areas is black African betters in the system and the high performance center needs to, uh, to, to address that and, and uh, there are a number of initiatives that they are putting in place to address these areas. This is an area that does not make us happy. This is an area that we need to have a very rigorous plan to ensure that it happens. It is linked again to the apartheid geography that you find in South Africa, uh, where if you grew up in a in an affluent, rich society or rich neighborhood, you are likely to have better facilities in the schools that are there, in the clubs that are there. But if you grow up in a, in a disadvantaged environment, you are likely to have worse facilities and therefore your development of a player in terms of the techniques and stuff like that, that grows in that uh, poor environment and the one that grows in that affluent environment, environment they, they had development is not going to be on par because facilities play a very, very important part. Let me give an example. If I grow up playing cricket on a, on a concrete pitch. Uh, uh, President, uh, President, uh, we are left yes, with 30 minutes. President, sorry, President, yes, we are left with 30 minutes and we still want uh, that the minister must chip in and okay, then I'm not even sure whether the members, they don't want a follow up questions. You must okay, try to be I will faster. That OK, sorry, Chapters. there are only four questions that I'll deal with. Then the, the, the critical one is that the state of franchise in, in cricket, of, of franchise cricket in non uh, metro areas. Uh, Unfortunately, Chair, the, the issue is more economic than anything else. The current system that we have of franchise cricket is also not self-sustaining. When it was introduced in 2003, I mean after 2003, the view was that these cricket structures or these cricket teams will generate their own funding to develop uh, cricket in their areas and then they will be self-sustaining. So that matter relates largely to, to issues of economic affordability and hence we are trying to partner with municipalities so that municipalities also invest in these teams so that they grow them. I think Chair, I think that that would conclude the questions that uh, I had noted unless Beresford has other questions that he might have noted which I have not noted. Other than that Chair, I think that concludes okay. the Thank you, Honor honourable members. In in the in their responses, um, the president, the CEO, acting CEO, the deputy president, one of them confirmed that they, they are in in good relations with the the department. Whilst we agree, because they were supposed to, but uh, I wanted to check. How did they present this issue that is uh, haunting us of a transformation if they, 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 they are in good terms with the department? But, um, Honorable Mishongo, I, I do see your, your hand. Uh, I wanted that at this point in time, Minister, we must give him um, some few minutes to talk to us because at three o'clock he's going somewhere and, and, and would love, especially the, the cricket is under uh, this department also. Uh, please, honorable members, with your respect, honorable Mshongo, can you give the minister uh, to chip in? I thank you. Thank you very much, Chair, and thanks, uh, honorable members. Uh, the <laughs> Uh, president uh, of uh, CSA and uh, everybody. Firstly, uh, uh, Chair, uh, I think uh, we need to 
make this point that uh, the EPG uh, in its uh, barometer process uh, did uh, find progress or see progress uh, on transformation program. I, I hope at some point we, uh, with cricket uh, in particular, uh, at, at some point, uh, we'll have a, a, a discussion uh, about uh, the APG for 2018-2019. Uh, and I think we must uh, underscore that point and uh, observe it, uh, because I think it's important uh, to do so. Now, on the uh, issues at hand, um firstly there is there is an issue about the school sport because EPG does raise the point that uh, out of 25,000 schools you have about 10 percent which are having uh, sport uh, and, and physical training so, we did uh, make a point after the the, uh, the outcome of the EPG that uh, we will go back to the drawing board uh, as government, uh, and that is the, the Department uh, of Basic Education and ourselves. Why is on development? Because that's, that's mainly a development. Uh, why is on that uh, chair? Uh, we we had uh, the president uh, uh, did uh, allude to the fact that there's 300 million rands they they put aside for development, um, and uh, in the process, uh, uh, the people or uh, athletes get uh, uh, to disappear in the system when they go to uh, institutions of higher learning like Tivet colleges and so on and so forth. But I think uh, we, we need to visit this question uh, because if this is what we've been doing over a period of time, the issue would be where the black African players on the field. Um, <clears throat> because if we, we don't we don't confront that uh, and, and, and don't follow through the very disappearance which is being uh, uh, raised here uh, of uh, people who are being trained, developed, and at the same time, uh, they, they are lost uh, to the system. It means something needs to be done. Uh, one, to track that, but also uh, do everything to respond to this question. Uh, what happened to the African players, where are they? You know, with everything uh, 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 within rugby, uh, but you 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 talk of a Sia, you talk of a Mbonambi, you talk of a Mapimbi, and so on and so forth. So that's that's one area. <clears throat> Secondly, chair, the two million, uh, maybe the president, they have a lot of money, they they forget. The two million which we give to priority uh, sport uh, with cricket, we added with the three million development intervention, like what he referred to, which is cricket hubs. Um, and I think uh, that must be recorded, that it's not only two million, uh, but there is this three million uh, specifically for this purpose. I have uh, had uh, the the issue about, frankly speaking, chair. I think President, uh, as uh, as somebody responsible for this portfolio, I felt insulted with your with your uh, intervention when you said you only take people on merit. Now, when we talk of cricket and going to the heart, to the core, you look at the CEO, you look at the director, you look at the coach, you will find the deputy uh, being an African, 
you look at the betting specialist and you come and say uh, to the nation, no, there's no, there's nothing wrong. There's no regress in transport. I, I feel uh, particularly insulted with that uh, kind of. It says that uh, there is a particular posture which is being taken. That uh, you you'll have people uh, Africans uh, elsewhere in other areas which are not the core. There is no core besides this. As I said, that I'm talking of a key five top five, and it's one. Uh, and that person is a deputy uh, to the coach. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm raising that uh, just to make a point that uh, uh, I, I, I'm not going to be uh, smiling to that kind of a, of a statement. Does it mean that after 26 years, there hasn't been anybody who would be able to fill at least one of the of these positions the only people with merit are only white i i, I take exception definitely to that now just another correction you did come to to us and we are working with uh, you uh, as cricket very well and uh, uh, you, you were correct on that, but your request of the 27 has no, is being processed, has not been approved yet. There are things we need to do. Um, consultation are still on, especially with the Department of, of Health, and I understand people are being tested, and they would want the, the details uh, of that uh, if uh, uh, there's an indication of any player who's positive would want that. Um, so we, we are processing it. So it mustn't be put as if uh, it's been approved because uh, it, it, will, it will pass here uh, if it's approved. The, the, the goodwill, yes, is there from ourselves. Uh, we've, we've showed that throughout the process, uh, that goodwill. Fundamentally, Chair, as I, as I conclude, there are two um there are two issues at hand here um with the outcomes of epg uh, i'm happy to always make people happy if there's progress uh, there should be no regress um now if you see signs of regress and you are told no it's nothing uh, uh, it's just an uh, imagination on your side. Uh, it's a big problem. There are two fundamental issues we're dealing with here. One is the issue uh, of development, which government also has a role to play, which uh, sporting codes have a role to play, including coming out clearly uh, on this uh, 300 million thing. It, ca it can't be accepted. So uh, it's like, look, we, we are developing people, we, we, we put 300 million rands, but you won't, you won't see them on the pitch. So it's development. The second area, and I did say on development that uh, the MOU with the Department of Basic Education is going to be revisited because uh, we also as government must answer a question, is this tool working? So that's the first one. The second one uh, is, the, is the will. I think public representatives should disabuse themselves in a process of being managed. There has to be an iron will to transform. It shouldn't be malicious compliance that no, we're doing it now, uh, tomorrow, even if uh, things go back and so on. So, Chair, uh, we, 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 we met with CSA last, last uh, year uh, when there was this thing of the suspension of the, of the, of the CEO. Um, 
and we're told that uh, when CEO has uh, done something, we don't know, we'll wait, we'll wait for the process. Uh, if you like, the matter is subjudicate. But I did make a point. I did make a point that if you have a board and then uh, the scenes which emanate out of the work and the operations is that are then the sins of a CEO. In fact, it's not only the CEO, it's the CFO, it's the COO, if I'm not mistaken, and all of them are Africans. Uh, and it's, it's a curious thing. So if they are involved in wrongdoing, they must face the full might of the law. But it's just a curious thing to say that here we are, uh, there is there is a visible movement, there is a visible change, but we need to be happy and say, no, uh, we, we are seeing things, there's nothing wrong. So I, I want to leave it at that, uh, that uh, with the sporting codes, we are still, especially after the outcome last week of the EPG, we are still going to be engaging with all of them, including uh, Cricket South Africa. But what I've said about the, the developments, uh, I want to underline that uh, I think uh, the signs we are seeing are not good signs, and this must be confronted. Least, I mean, worse when you are going to have people who are charged with the responsibility. I heard the president trying to uh, speak on somebody else's behalf and so on. But a person tells you that, uh, as far as is concerned, transformation is nothing, basically. Part of the problem from the charter in 2011 to the, the barometer, which we are dealing with now, is that generally in sport, in general terms, um, with the charter, uh, it was uh, one size fits all and uh, open ended and so on. With the parameter, we are not going to uh, excuse people because it's done with the sporting bodies. So if 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 we together with you agree on a on a particular and this is not referring to CSA at this moment at this moment agree on a particular uh, target and we are part of that you are leading uh, on that and yet you don't fulfill that uh, it, it, it can't be excused uh, but I think that um, we are going to uh, work uh, do our our bit uh, ourselves like you are doing your your work chairperson uh, and the portfolio committee, but uh, the, the the signs are not are not something which uh, I hope uh, it's, it's it's a dream, you know, uh, it's a nightmare which is going to uh, go away, but it can't be left. Not 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 in 2020, not in 2020, and uh, there's no other way of of of. Uh, sugar coating what you are faced with we are committed to transformation and we want to see it happening and we want to see everybody playing his role thank you very much Chair. thank you so much um honorable the minister sometimes it does help when you are calling uh, anyone to come in account uh, in the presentation, we've we've seen five million from the department. But uh, thank you to come out of your busy schedule. Sometimes we do take apologies, but if sometimes you know that you have a space, please join us every now and then. Thank you so much, Honorable uh, Mavingos and Honorable Mshongo. There and every follow up. Thank you so. Much. Much, uh, Minister, you are excused. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair President. Thank you. Um, the, 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 
the the the, the cultural respect uh, um, starts from uh, the the our language and names and uh, uh, Mr. Senzani chose not to deal with that or even to hear that aspect and uh, and and how can we be led by a leader who is not uh, proud of his Seni or or his language and it's it start from there and another thing was like um, the 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 standard bands withdrawal uh, from from uh, from the the cricket SA. He is saying that there they were, they were challenges over there, and he's not saying what are those challenges. And uh, I've just realized that Mr. Senzani is not answering specific questions, but he's just, uh, you know, generalizing in everything. And how, how can we have, uh, um, you know, a, a, a only four to five uh, players within a club as if the, our demographics are like 50-50 with black and white? I don't understand why. And, and, and the, Mr. Senzani is... is, is is keeping on saying that cricket is, is, is an expensive sport, as if uh, you know the, it is only for for rich people, mainly the white people. And I don't understand that, that why he's still talking about the street, the, the, this street cricket, uh, because when it was done, it was done because uh, you know our our kids or like we were kids then that we were playing cricket in the streets, and it wasn't like uh, something that we wanted to do. But we have to have those spaces, and we, our, our, our kids will be uh, uh, playing in the streets, and it's dangerous for them. Members, and, uh, just put your, your, your things brief to the point, because I want yeah, them to yeah, I, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am doing that, and we cannot perpetuate uh, this, this poverty-stricken situation that, that we have as a people. So uh, can, we, can we just get rid of these street tickets? And uh, they're wasting money, and the committee needs to inculcate Afrocentric uh, development within the sport. I don't think Mrs. Zani, uh, you know, is, is the right person to do this. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. May I correct you? The president of the Cricket South Africa is Mr. Nenzani. Uh, you know, even yourself, you, you don't call him accordingly. Apologies. So, uh, I'm, I'm, Nenzani. I'm just, I'm just and, uh, apologizing for everyone who has done that, even your good self. Honorable Mshongo. Anyabonga, Chairperson. Chairperson, Aba Pendula Ngumbuzo wa Minite. What is the board plan? Should they find out that they did not exercise their duties properly regarding Otabang? Another question, Answanga. This serious allegation regarding the conflict of interest amongst board members. Did they take any step? Did they resign? When did they resign? Those questions were not answered. But I wanted to highlight what the minister was saying. The barometer, the pitch is not working. For the past 26 years, it has never worked. You cannot give someone to measure himself or to set target for himself. You cannot do that. It's not working. It's not going to work. Another issue that I want to tell the minister, we've been reviewing the MOU between the education and sports. There's no action. I wonder if he's saying this say it will work. How many times did we do that? Now, above all, it, sh it is shocking that the department did not approve the event that the CSA has advertised already. It is really shocking. Thank you, Chair, for now. You know, you know honorable members, it's nice to have a committee who's doing it's oversight, um, uh, but uh, as as U U minister said, we are going to do this oversight irrespective of what. Uh, can I give uh, the, the the president yeah. and before honourable members immediately that the president um, responded? I w I have just two issues uh, that I will I will share with the committee members. I thank you. Uh, the president. Oh, the president has muted the president or the deputy president or the CEO, acting CEO. That's your time. We don't have time. We have left with five minutes. Uh, whilst we are still going to uh, finalize issues of the committee. 
Where are they, so? Where are they, our visitors? I'm here, I'm here, Chairperson. Oh, please, please. When you're speaking, please, side. Please. Yes, yes, President. Okay. Okay, Should President. Yes, okay. yes, yes, President. Chair, let, let, let me start. Uh, I won't take much of your time, Chair. Uh, we note uh, what uh, the Minister has said, especially as to the question that where are black African players? Uh, you know, in the system, you have people and, and uh, you have to ensure that people fall in line with the, with the policies of the organization. For instance, we're saying that uh, in, a, in, a, in a team, there has to be a minimum, a minimum of three black African players in our first uh, class cricket. And, and uh, most of the time that becomes a maximum. Uh, instead of a minimum, it becomes a maximum. Uh, because you need to, to change people's mind and you need to ensure that uh, you make them to implement what needs to be done. Uh, it's, a, it's a big issue that we're dealing with because you it's also need to talk about opportunity. Police opportunity. respond to a call about a man if you who select allegedly used a counterfeit $20 bill to buy cigarettes. In the team. He cannot come and bet 17 seven minutes later, eight, the man they are there to investigate lies more than that. So those are the, the, are the dynamics and nuances that take dead place shortly within after. the implementation of the transformation. The man was 46 year old George Floyd, a bouncer originally from Houston who'd lost his job in a restaurant on the issue of the conflict. In the board and uh, what will happen to the board once the the investigation comes is, is true and uh, sort of fingers that the board would have made certain decisions that are not right. The members council is the owner of that report. The members council elects the board. Therefore, the members council will have to decide what they do with the board one if there are any issues that are fingering the board in terms of the board having failed in its responsibility. And board members as directors in, in uh, the the issue of uh, Honorable Mark Lingosi, uh, the issue of street cricket, uh, street cricket uh, chance and see how it turns out. It's not necessarily what he's thinking is going to be, but this is a, an issue to galvanize communities against, I mean, towards the game of cricket so that this game becomes a, a truly national sport of winners. I will stop there, Chairperson, because I don't want to to take much of your time. Um, thank you, President. But I'm suspecting that we have the majority uh, of, of the board will taking the decision. We have noted all your, your members of committee and even the ministry about the majority in, in that in that board and those who are going to take a decision. Let, let's, let's, let's say uh, thank you for the presentation that you were just transparent and you are hearing us uh, that the way forward is go back. To Floyd's the death triggered courts. major protests in, in Minneapolis that, you must be having and sparked one rage across the country. I don't want even to repeat what Honorable one of the officers said involved. and what the minister is saying. We, we, we don't want to be crying babies. We want to leave uh, this uh, portfolio committee with integrity, with our work, saying that we have changed uh, these sporting codes, including yours. By these honorable members, can I allow that? Uh, let's say thank you so much, but not any longer that we come here with the, the delegation without a gender sensitive. Uh, you are supposed to for one of you to leave behind in that um, induction and put one member uh, who maybe you work with in order that he must have a right uh, to interact with the, the committee. If you are working as a collective, no one cannot come and answer the question, especially that oh, President is here, especially that the acting CEO is here. We're supposed to have one person, especially from the women. So by those words, honorable members, let me take this opportunity to say, President, uh, if you want to say something, 
the meeting up there, we have, we have said something, I'm going to close it and sort some few uh, issues with the committee. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. We appreciate the opportunity and uh, we've taken your instruction. Thank you very much. Honorable members, can, can we release uh, the three visitors, uh, Jabu and Zolega? Now, um, 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 I want to share this thing, honorable members. That's why I wanted that we must have our share mi mi minutes with the, with the committee. Uh, it comes to a, a understanding and of the committee that uh, one of your uh, administrator, which is Dr. Mashlobo, uh, wanted uh, to tell us what he has done in between the work of the committee. Uh, he's saying to us, because uh, I don't know whether he's online, but he's supposed to, to be in the line, Dr. Mashlobo has written a book called 44 Young Leaders in commemoration of 16 June 1970 on the Mandela Day, 18 July 2020. Let's support our young people when they are doing well to change our country. And then all the, the one administrator uh, or researcher uh, wanted uh, me to give her a space to say something to us as honorable members, uh, to you administrators of ours. Okay, um, thank you, Chairperson, for affording me the opportunity to talk to the members shortly. I will not take long, it will only be a few seconds. Uh, members, um, I'm going to send an email to all the members. I've done it before, but I'm going to resend the email. It's just a, a small study that we are doing from the research union to try and understand how we can assist members better. So it's only a, a seven questions that I'll be sending that will be attached to the email. All you just need to do is just respond to the questions that I sent. Uh, they are straightforward questions. It's asking about your IT support system that you have in place. How would you like to receive your research briefs, whether it's hard copies or electronic format and so on. So, um, yeah, the questions, I will send them immediately after the, the meeting, and then the members can respond to me directly. Uh, so that's that's about it, Chess. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. Yes, Honorable Mashlob, I want to say something. Dr. Mashlob? Okay. Dr. Mashlob? I've seen uh, Honorable Mashlob. Yes, Honorable Mashlob. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I wanted to find out uh, when are we going to have our, our minutes of all previous minutes? Minutes of all previous minutes. And Chair, when are we going to have for him to present to our committee? And lastly, I'll propose, Chair, that we must have a full report of 150, the final report, because the relief fund, people are still crying even today, they did not receive their money. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Mshongo, uh, you know that you have adopted the program of this committee. Uh, I'm not having any problem about 150 million costs. Uh, we are not yet having the final honorable members. I need direction from you. So many individuals, uh, they are writing to us as a committee, as individuals. So when we are look at the, the, the program of the committee, we're not even having a chance of adopting our minutes. So uh, we have program which, which we have adopted. So uh, I'll sit down with them, the management, but I must tell you, honorable members, as I'm sitting here, honorable um, Madingos, he knows, uh, every uh, member who has been given a hearing uh, to a department, some they are going to a presidents, and then department presidency, presidents refer to a department, 
and then they will come back to EE committee. And other, it's just like that. We need to manage this in order that at the end of, of, of our term of, of having a program, I'm not saying we must not take those people, but there are so many. And others, when I was looking, I've seen that others were supposed to be belonging somewhere in order that those people, they must present themselves. But if twice and thrice and fourth, uh, you went to a president and refer you back to the, the ministry, uh, as I'm sitting here, honorable members, I responded to it to Musa. As I'm sitting here chairing this meeting, I'm seeing so many SMS of one person, but I took a decision, honorable members, that I've presented uh, you according to the responses because they forwarded the information and I look at the, their information. I look in all information. One other time, this member, yet come in a committee, Honorable Mangingos was uh, very critical on him. And I, I do research with my uh, research uh, uh, people and uh, the, what is, Omaklobo. So I've responded according to that because if all of them as individuals, they can come to the committee to complain once they, are, they have got a right, but we must be very careful, honorable members. I do hear honorable Klongo. Uh, one other time, honorable Ms. Tenyatela was in the committee meeting and he didn't do what he's doing every day to forward to, to, to all members, to forward to DG, to forward to, to minister. But when we are looking, he has been given chance uh, to talk. That white paper, honorable members, is going to assist us because when what I'm looking immediately that some members they are no longer getting what they have been getting, they are coming back and and fighting. One other time, Mr. Nyatela uh, swearing at me as new chairperson. We're not even uh, having a know-how of this department. A note taken, honorable Mshongo, and we will 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 we'll relook, but real minutes. They, they will suppose in the next meeting that we must present it. Painful, honorable members. We need to work as we are doing as a collective. I'm appreciating what we are doing as this committee. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. To thank, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. Honorable Adams. Thank you. Congo.